I want to minister from a phrase in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. One of the things that we've come to in Mount Zion is to a blood. More specifically, the sprinkling of blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. The general context of this passage is set in a place where the apostle is declaring a great many blessings that God's people have received, and that is set in contrast to the Mount Sinai of old that Israel went to. Theirs was to darkness, but ours was to light. And theirs was to fear, but ours was to a blood that enables us to draw near. And for them it became cursing, for cursed is everyone, brethren, everyone who depends and relies on the law as a means of coming to God. But ours is to great blessing, whether it is to the city of the living God or to the new Jerusalem, whether it is to an innumerable company of angels or whether it is to the firstborn whose names are written in heaven or to God who is the judge of all men or to Jesus who is the mediator of the New Testament or in our case to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. It's a blood that brings blessing. And anywhere we divide rightly at this table, we declare, proclaim the death of Christ Jesus always on its heels will be great blessing. That's the distinction between his blood and the blood of Abel. And we'll get to that here in just a second. A broader theme here. One of the broad themes of the book of Hebrews is the theme of better. That is, everything that we received in Christ is better than all the things that had been revealed prior, prior to Christ that God had revealed, things that we might refer to as shadows. In fact, when referring to the law, Colossians 2.17 refers to the law as shadow of things to come. But Christ is not a shadow of things to come. In Christ, it, it becomes substance and real, and thus we should expect that the things that are of substance are going to be superior or better than the things that were in the shadow. Now, in chapters one, one and two, we find that Jesus is, has has received a better, is much better than the angels, having received a much much better name than they. In the third chapter, Jesus is better than Moses as being over God's house, because of course the house belongs to Jesus. In the fourth chapter, there is a better rest for us because if Joshua had given them rest, then he would never have spoken of another day. And in the sixth chapter, there's a better hope, which enters into that which was in the, in the veil. Israel's hope was in the earth, parting of red seas, overcoming enemies in Canaan, things like this, but ours is far superior for it's beyond this life where Jesus has entered in on our behalf into heaven. In chapter 7, of course, there's a better high priest by virtue of the power of an endless life. In chapter 8, a better tabernacle and a better covenant and better promises. And in chapter 9, of course, a better sacrifice by which we have obtained eternal redemption. The thing that we want to see this morning is that the blood of Christ is better, is better, superior than that of Abel. Now, you'll find that when you look at a shadow versus substance, you always find things that are, that are true of both together. Things that we can see comparing them together that are the same. You know, like Christ was a priest, high priest. Just like the, the priests of old were priests. Or the fact that there's a mountain that Israel came to. And like we have come to a mountain. It's Mount Sinai. There are things that are similar but also, as we look carefully to the things that are similar, we will find things that are quite different as we look to them and compare them, okay? And that's what, I, that's what I want us to see this morning as we look to this blood. Now, the bottom line is, when we look to the blood of Abel versus the blood of Christ, the thing that we see that is similar in it is that both... There was a shedding of blood unto the offering up of life. Abel died, Jesus died. And the other thing that is most significant about that is that the eternal destiny of men was determined as God was provoked by both of those bloods. 
both of them. In Abel's regard, Cain killed Abel. It was a murder. And God said, your bl the blood of your brother is speaking to me. And the same earth that has received the blood of your brother shall be a curse to you. And thus was his eternal destiny sealed by the offering of Abel in the sense of murder. You might say that Abel's blood was the first martyr to say the, a word like this, how long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Remember the souls that were under the altar, altar that were slain for the word of God who kept their testimony? That's exactly why Abel was slain. Because his works were righteous and his brothers were evil. See? First one to say that. All the martyrs are saying this. This is the kind of thing that the blood of Abel speaks. It speaks a curse to men. And it cursed, cursed Cain. But here's where the blood of Christ is far superior because when the blood of Abel spoke, it cried for justice that had not yet been satisfied. But when the blood of Christ speaks, it cries as justice that had in fact been fully satisfied. And thus does the blood of Christ say things like what Brother Gibbon had mentioned. Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. When you hear of the death of Christ being proclaimed at this table, you'll hear that. You'll hear that. Be of good cheer. This is a place for the saints of God to be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. Or you might hear something like this. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. You hear that. In the death of Christ, the blood of Christ speaks this. When you consider the death of Christ Jesus, we have peace with God. There's no enmity between the people of God and God himself. He has reconciled us unto himself through Christ Jesus and by his blood, having obtained eternal redemption. Or you'll hear something like this. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Don't you feel that tugging and drawing in your own heart when you consider the death of Christ? A drawing, a desire to draw near. So what is that? That's the blood of Christ speaking. First speaking to God and then ministering to us. Or you'll hear something like this. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord God is with him, and the shadow of a king is among them. That's true in the death of Christ Jesus. The Lord God is with us. The shadow of a king is among us. God is our God, and he is our king. By virtue of the blood of Christ that first spoke to God, and then it speaks to us. Or you'll continue to hear something like this. You'll continually be provoked by this exhortation to your heart. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Mm -hmm. That is not an exhortation that just provokes you in coming in, although it did do that. But as you give yourself, you come to the foot of the cross of Christ Jesus with discernment, you'll hear the blood of Christ saying this. Believe on me with all of your heart, and you will be saved. So this is just one thing I've seen, but I, I am so grateful for the, the mastery of the Apostle Paul here and not forsaken the shadow because he used the shadow as like a foundation to launch out into exposing us to the great substance. And although on that day a man was cursed because of blood, now we're blessed because of blood. And our eternal destiny is sealed in the blood of the Son of Jesus, in the blood of the Son of God as we believe on him. So thank God for this better speaking of the blood of Christ. Father, we're so thankful.